Hello procrastinators and welcome to a dream I once had. This is Mr. Stephen Moffat. This is what fan I guess. This <laughs> is Mr. Stephen Moffat, head writer of a million things and basically runner of everything that's ever made a Tumblr gif ever. Hello, Stephen. That's true. Hello, thank you. Yes, um, this is going to be one of our very professional review. About as professional as my unboxing videos, these. We yeah. have two cameras. We have a camera there and a camera there. I will forget that for the foreseeable future. In, unless we find out that one doesn't work or something. Yes, yes, yes unless that happens. That in which case we'll just go straight for that one. So, we have one question to start with. Yes, a very important one. One we felt that the whole internet would, you know, be really want to know. Absolutely it, dread to imagine what that could possibly be. This, this, this is about... The 11th hour. The 11th hour. Yeah. This right. is in the 11th hour. Okay. There's, there's a very important question. This is the most important question yeah. about 11th hour. It's, it's just the biggest, like, continuity thing we just need to know an answer to. In the 11th hour, is Amy's friend Jeff watching Lesbian Spank Inferno when the doctor walks in on him? Well, it, it's entirely possible. <laughs> Um, we want a cannon. We want Damn a cannon answer. Here. <laughs> I had never thought what he could possibly be watching, uh, and, and preferred not to because the doctor <laughs> saw it. Uh, I like the idea uh, that the doctor he... has seen a small section of lesbian spank inferno. Yeah. Well, we haven't made this up, by the way. Just <laughs> it's not just my favourite thing on the internet. No, it's uh, it's important. Most of my stuff. friends seem to uh, uh, want very very much for Jeff to be gay because they themselves were so. Uh, Could it so, be like like Gay Spank Inferno, the sequel, or like Ultimate Film? Mm -hmm. um, well, who can say? He does say get a girlfriend. That would be a little bit tactless if he'd just seen Gay. <laughs> Tumblr would no. implode, not explode like normal with everything. Tumblr would just go <laughs> and cease to be. I, I, I think would the, anybody notice? I, 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 oh, yes! <laughs> would yeah. anyone on the internet notice things? Internet? But on the street, <laughs> outside, would the, would the world really change? Yeah. Yes, because okay. all of the people you who were on Tumblr, Tumblr would then be yes, taken to the streets. <laughs> <laughs> going, where has the Tumblr gone? It's as far as my, my very brief uh, acquaintanceship with Tumblr. It's a, a, a place where people who really hate me gather. No, so, it's oh, a there's a lot of people who love you. It's, all, it's yeah. all of Doctor Who. It's, it's Doctor Who and Sherlock gifts. Just of things that they've done. And that's all it is, as far as I can do. I just and in the case of Sherlock, gifts of a number of things that they are unlikely to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's yeah. most of that as well. Yes. There's a lot of out of context. Tumblr. Yeah. So, Stephen Moffat doesn't like Tumblr. Next question. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Stop messing with him! I, I thought he didn't like me, but I'm gratified to know that maybe one of them does. The higher the concentration of fans, the bigger the concentration of bile. Mm. Which is really weird, that just makes me think that. And this internet down. of which you yeah. speak, is there any kind of off switch? Uh, not <laughs> yet. Yeah. Uh, you do. Not. I hope not. <laughs> because not for you, but you're better now. He's been known to uh, uh, put on a, p a special uh, app on the YouTube comments, so it just goes, Herpa derp Yeah, derp I derp turned off my comment derp section. Derp instead of whatever they actually wrote. It removes the YouTube comments because they're just bile and hatred towards oh, me right. now. Oh god. And it's either bile yes. and hatred and then it's someone responding with death threats and bile to the person who, and it's just it just gracefully becomes England is versus America. That's what all comment sections eventually lead to. Is it is why England is better than America or America is better than England. Yeah, it's a really weird someone should write a paper on this at some point. Yes. This is just a scientific thing. If only to get us. hated by Tumblr. Yeah, yeah. That's the sort of thing. <laughs> yes, that was that was a question. It went well. We had a question. That we was had a planned question. question. So that was the interview with Mr. Stephen Moffat. Yeah. We now know he hates Tumblr. The doctor <laughs> I don't. is homophobic. <laughs> And the doctor is not no, homophobic. We're gonna, no. we're gonna, we're gonna carry on. Now a quick comment to our comment section. You will notice we don't ask any of the questions you want to ask. Yes. And that's because we know he's gonna say, I can't tell you about future yes. projects. So we decided just not to ask those questions and instead ask things that we think are fun and geeky. Yeah. So, um, do we want to talk about the morality of the TARDIS? Yeah, this is something, this is, this is a concept. <laughs> Right. That I came up with in the shower, like where all good ideas come from. Mm. Yeah. The the uh, this the TARDIS is a living creature. This is well, it's a machine that very closely resembles a living creature. It, but it has a sense of morality. Does it? It does because we know it puts him where he needs to be for the right things to happen. So the, the TARDIS technically controls the Doctor's life. Yeah. This was a long but... shower, by the way. <laughs> I will sit through this. <laughs> yeah. But it's, so so you've got this this machine sentient machine sort of thing that puts the Doctor where he needs to be, but. Needs to be for what? So if it's an overall grand scheme, see, I, the TARDIS I, see, in I, control of everything? I don't think that's what the, uh, the, the TARDIS does. I don't think it's like Quantum Leap, where uh -huh. he's thinking he's been put where he needs to be. I think it's much more 
that the TARDIS is like a party animal saying, that looks way fun. Ah, Let's put the Doctor in there kind of thing. and see what happens. It's just, and that's uh, what the that's Doctor's nice. like himself. He could, cause I, I mean, he would want to talk, but why does he never turn up in times of peace? What would he do? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, Sit he turns around up with those four a little bit. So yeah. I mean, we actually have that line in uh, one of, I think it's the Impossible Astronaut, where he just says, if I, if I give her the, the, the general picture, she'll put me in the place that's the most fun. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, sort of, the sort of party moment. Party in terms of uh, of all human history or all alien and alien history is where the, where the most danger is. The Doctor is a thrill seeker. Yeah, uh, he lives for danger and excitement. So the TARDIS just throws him there, and he tries tries to sort out as best he can. I don't think either the Doctor or the TARDIS are setting out to mend the universe. I much prefer the idea of the TARDIS as a party animal. That's beautiful. That, that is great. That you fix that for me, thank you, because that's really bugging yeah. me. <laughs> it's just you that the TARDIS was in charge of it. Yeah, but well, if it yeah. was, I mean, that that's really the TARDIS is like essentially eternal if it sits around a long. The TARDIS can play a really long game of getting the Doctor to put things in place, yes. then become supreme being of the universe. The Doctor could be the TARDIS could be the ultimate enemy of the Doctor if it was doing that, but it's just a party animal instead. It party just likes some <laughs> fun. It's, but I think uh, I mean it, when we brought the TARDIS to to life uh, uh, as Mad Idris, yeah. I mean that's very obvious that. No, she, uh, she's just, you know, she's just mental. She just wants that. She just wants to have a huge amount of fun. Yeah. And she thinks the doctor's amazing, isn't that great? She thinks the doctor's like a pet. Yeah. And let's go and take my pet and put him there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. That's what the what, that's what the TARDIS is like, and that's what the doctor's like. Yeah. Neither of them are trying to stitch the universe together. He sometimes I think the doctor pretends to himself that's what he does, but he doesn't. <laughs> He's just he hasn't around even got around to, to fixing his. A, a space time machine so it doesn't look like a phone box because yeah. he likes the colour blue no better reason the TARDIS has the time rotor in the very centre of it mm. does it have like a smaller space rotor behind a cupboard door somewhere in there it's not in the centre though is it it's in, oh, it's in the entrance yeah, yeah, it's, it's, right, it, it's, in, it's in the porch I assume you moved it there I, 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 I always got like that, that about, 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 the, about the TARDIS the first room you go to is the most important hat stand and the, the wardrobe like over there, there. Yeah, yeah. a million rooms back yeah. But it's sort of, it's, I assume we would have a space rotor as well, because it's the time rotor. That doesn't sound like it would change. You know, I believe, I don't know if this is true, and, and, and somebody will write into the, uh, your non existent uh, <laughs> uh, 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 comment section and, and correct me, but I think when they first said time rotor, they were not referring to the column. Oh, <laughs> I think so. William Hartnell, so I think it's the chase. And it's very obvious it's not actually the column at all. I think I could be wrong about that. Oh, I, see, we, I know so little about the show. And no one knows it. everything. No, well, you can't really, because no. it's it's Cause such a... 50 and, years. And, and, and if you didn't know all of it, you would be unable to make it all make and, sense. Until, oh, that's also true. until the BBC release a giant box set of all classic Doctor Who. That's what I'm waiting for, just the one box set of well, all classic there Doctor There is a problem with that. There is the problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, but all that we've got. I always want to see like little to go back you like in that? time. I would love that. Okay. I would spend a bajillion pounds. Okay. Or how much it costs. Well, that, that's an extraordinary deal you're offering. A one bajillion pounds. That would cover most of the costs of making it. Because it's always so. It's all comes out. Yeah, most of the guys, okay. you know, it would be, DVD printing must be expensive, I don't know. So, the Doctor obviously spends a lot of time on Earth. Mm. Is that the TARDIS's choice, or is that uh, the Doctor's, and why do we think they have such a fondness for Earth in particular? Is it just because we all look like Time Lords? Well, there is this thing about where we shoot Doctor Who. Well, I suppose. Which is, yeah, uh, practically less, speaking... We are the only planet with quarries, uh, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. that's the one. <laughs> okay, why <laughs> Why does the Doctor always go to work? Well, apart from the fact that we have to, we need the quarries. Yeah. Um, it, it, he has a fascination for a human kind. It's, it's more yeah. than a fascination, actually. Is that uh, uh, these days? It's because he lost his own people, and and and, and we look quite like him. Yeah. He'd be inclined to hang around with us. We've got smooth foreheads like he has. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I mean that's the best uh, answer I can come up with. The other thing Did is you, you that, see oh. in Doctor Who the yeah. stories where he interacts with humanity. Uh, as you know, even with the Matt Smith Doctor, so far he's he's lived thousands of years we haven't seen. So I mean, he goes That's and hangs true. out with jelly monsters and jelly planets. But I mean, frankly, they're just too boring to watch. I think there's a I think there's a a, a proper <laughs> thing about the Doctor, uh, and therefore you could say of, of all time lords is he has been everywhere. He has met everybody. Yeah. He has, he, and uh, almost more damagingly, he can go anywhere and he can do anything, and he's sort of got used to that. Yeah, that's why he does need somebody with him. Yeah, uh, uh, whose who's face will light up because then he can say, "Oh, that is amazing, isn't it? I'd forgotten it was amazing. I know every single thing about it. I know many, how many atoms are in it. I know exactly how long it lasts. I know it begins and how it ends. But I, I don't know what it is to be thrilled by it until 
I see someone who's thrilled by it, and yeah. then and then I can I can get back in I can get back on that. There are Doctor Who stories where he doesn't know anything. But one of the advantages of the, of the Doctor as a hero is you can choose whether or not this week he knows, he knows <laughs> everything, <laughs> or whether he's walking and saying, I haven't a clue. I haven't a clue what's going on. Yeah. Uh, and frequently there are moments in Doctor Who I think where, where the companions are more clued up than he is because yeah. he because he can be a bit focused, a bit artistic at times, a bit silly at times. He can. He can get too obsessed with his own shoelaces to notice that the uh, that the room is burning down. You can do all those things. <laughs> but he needs that that sort of priority that, uh, that that humanity gives him. And as you know, right at the very very beginning of the series, or maybe you don't know, uh, he's actually quite amoral when he's the William yeah. Hartnell doctor. Yeah. He yeah. starts off being really quite wicked. He sort of learns how how to be nice to people by contact with people. So he that those are the wave guides around him that make him uh, what he should be and what we want him to be. He's magic. He's magic. <laughs> well, do you know, that's the other thing, though, is kind of, I think, in terms of boring, of, uh, to, to take it tremendously seriously, which obviously I do, uh, uh, that is exciting about this, he seems to us magic. Yeah. Uh, and to the, the many races who are, uh, whom he briefly appears to and, uh, and, and save, he appears like a magic hero. We know, we've been watching the series for a while, we know he's just a bloke. Yeah. He's a bloke of the space time. He's a very, very yeah. clever man, the space time machine. He's not very good at flying. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's very kind and very nice, but not sufficiently kind and nice that he would deliberately visit you to save you. He wouldn't notice a burning building and dash into it. He'd say, yeah. I'm in a burning building, therefore I'll get everybody out. So we know... After time of shoelaces. Yeah, after time of shoelaces, <laughs> because they are fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, I'm now just going to have to go back and rewatch all of the shoelaces. <laughs> <laughs> I believe there aren't any, sadly, but uh, I, I, I've, I've had a line cut about shoelaces about four times. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Now it's out there. Yeah. We've done it. We've done it. Yeah. Unless I cut it as well. Yeah. I might actually just cut it. Just <laughs> you might cut it just, spy, just, just out of spite. Just, 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 just have me reference it without it has yeah. been cut. So I was curious about um, the silence because, mm. I mean, it was heavily implied that they had been uh, around for a very long time, which rather than makes them parasites, sort of makes them really more symbiotic with humanity mm. if it's been around for such a long time. Do we think that the silence actually caused the downfall of the Silurians so that they could get the uh, humans who were more susceptible to them to uh, move around and take control. I forget. If, um, fair enough. Oh. <laughs> well, it's a lovely Down. idea. It's a lovely idea. That, uh, <laughs> that, that, and it's, uh, it's also a great get-out for me when, when people okay. say, oh, why weren't the silence involved in that or this? I say, they were. Yeah. Oh yeah, you just didn't remember. Uh, <laughs> great, brilliant. Great. So uh, they are a continuity fixer. Uh, it's true. Since since Doctor Who's come back, we've had three great continuity fixers. Russell and I used to talk about. I said he would always say, whenever I would say something, he said, "Oh, it was the Time War. It yeah. caused me." <laughs> and I thought after a while, well, the Time War sort of run out. I've rebooted the universe, so I say, so I, so I would say to people, it's either the Time War or it's the reboot of the universe. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and now we've got, and maybe the silence did it. Maybe yeah. the silence were in that episode, you just don't remember. Yeah, because that's, that's what Doctor Who is. It's an amazing collection of yeah. ways of getting out of script problems. Like you yeah. replace the yeah. actors, the TARDIS that's bigger on the inside and outside and yeah. go anywhere. Let, let's have a, papers, small, like let's have a small thing to take on mm. location yeah. and a big thing to live in our warehouse. Yeah. It is a spectacular response, Doctor Who, in general, creatively, to the limitations of television. That's yeah. what it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you don't uh, you don't be hide by your lead actor. You're not sorry, Matt. That's terrible. <laughs> uh, Bye. Like um, you know you you don't we can't build a spaceship, but we do have a phone box. Uh, yeah, it's it's all, all the best ideas come and uh, a screwdriver that does exactly what yeah. you want it to, but never what it should. Nothing, have. nothing too plot crucial. It's got a it, yeah. it's got a plot importance inhibitor, which is a very important feature yeah. in it. Which if it really matters, it won't work. But yeah. if you'd rather not have a very long scene about it getting out of a jail cell. Then you just case through it, yeah. That's unless it's deadlocked, okay. and, it gets, and then he gets through it because it because he's got a deadlock thing, so he has to yeah. have, has to be double deadlocked. Yeah. Remember, actually, actually emailing Russell saying, "Where are we on deadlocks?" It's a quadruple <laughs> deadlock that he can't get through. That's why he invented the red setting for the River Fox. Well, it, 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 isn't isn't that why he has a scarf to then sort of just grab things? Yeah, we haven't had a scarf. scarf. Had a scarf for a very long while, like a million years now. That scarf that you'd wear indoors on a hot day. I remember used to watching that as a kid. I just did that be, being, I'm so old. <laughs> I actually remember thinking, I like the scarf, but 
really? He's <laughs> indoors now. You should take his scarf off. It's getting silly. He had no neck. That was the, <laughs> that was the secret. Regenerated <laughs> wrong with no neck. So it's head actually holding off. his head up. Yeah. That's now canon. <laughs> um, I like that we just say whatever. We, we, we canon. now say that things are it. canon. Yeah, that's great. No, I can do that. I, I think. I okay, think, could you say that? Yeah. Yeah. The regeneration process used to be very chaotic and change pretty much every regeneration. Yes. And since Russell T. Davis, things have started to uh, smooth out quite a bit. Um, do we think there's a reason for that? Or is it just that is people he getting enjoyed good at, Is he getting good the, at regeneration? The but there's also that he becomes immune to the thing that killed him. Almost. Oh, I, I like the theory he came up with. Oh, that's good. That it's it's because it, it makes sense. so he can now fall off a radio telescope. What he did with, with David Tennant. With David Tennant, he fell off, jumped out of a spaceship, crashed through a thing, landed, and was fine. Well, that's just because it yes, wasn't the end of the show. Yet. <laughs> 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 that's because Wilf was in a box. <laughs> well, he, he was fall was broken by a thing, and he but was he was fine. as David Tennant was uh, just yeah. the things that happened he to him. He hasn't been killed sort of, by a spider recently. Yeah, yeah. That's, you're right. He, yeah. oh, he yeah. true. hasn't been killed by radiation yet. <laughs> there was radiation in that one, wasn't it? In the end of time. Oh, well, yeah, but, yeah, but since but then, since he then hasn't. he's been quite fine with <laughs> radiation. Yeah, but but he admittedly, John he hasn't was died. killed by radiation. Uh, don't, don't bring your nerdiness here unless you really made up. <laughs> God damn it. Peter Cabaldi, mm-hmm. because, because every character is now coming from Pompeii. That's just the rule of Doctor Who now. It, would yeah. seem to it be. seems to be the rule. He, the character he played, who I now can't remember the life of me, the name of, s- just noticed the TARDIS. Yes. Which is very, very irregular for a human. Mm. So is he the Doctor who at some point becomes human again using the wibbly wobbly thing from the... Uh, what would they get put in the clock? Yeah, in the, in the fog watch. Fog and they become human. Could he have been put human there and then that's why he saw the TARDIS? So that is a human version of the Doctor who the Doctor then saved. By accident. Complete by accident, but then sort of... While avoiding Captain Jack, who we also know was in Pompeii at the time. Feel free to take this one, by the way, because <laughs> I do love the idea. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, <laughs> so his big achievement uh, in saving one family... It was actually in, it was uh, him. Uh, I love taking that away from him. Like, oh, it was just me. <laughs> no wonder I fancy him. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's not a bad theory. It's not, it's not what we're going to go for. I'll be honest. Okay. We're not going to do that, but... Uh, but I mean, it, I mean, we are aware that, he, that that Peter Capaldi's played a big old part yeah. in Doctor Who before, and we're not going to ignore the fact. That's well. <laughs> and Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'll I'll let you in on this because uh, I think I've said it elsewhere anyway. But I mean, it's uh, I remember Russell told me that he had a big old plan as to why there were, there were two Peter Capaldis in <laughs> yeah. the uh, in the Who universe, one in uh, in Pompeii and one in Torchwood. And I so I, when I cast Peter and he got in touch to see how pleased he was. I said, okay, what was your, what was your theory and does it still work? And he, he said, yes, it does. Here it is. Ooh. So I don't know That's if we'll get good. to it. Oh, I we'll... never want to know. <laughs> yeah, well, no, we'll, we'll, we'll come we'll, back we'll, next year. We'll, we'll, we'll play that one out over time. But there is a, <laughs> it's actually quite neat. It's the, big, the big fun question is we know that uh, the Doctor, when he regenerates, the, the, the face is uh, the, it's not set from birth. He, yep. He's not like he was always going to be one day Peter Capaldi. We know yep. that's the case yep. because in the war games, uh, he has a choice of face and all that. So we know it's not set. So where does he get those faces from? They're not, they can't just be uh, randomly generated because they've got lines. Yep. And, uh, 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 you know, uh, they, they've aged. Yep. When he turns into Peter, he'll actually have lines on his face. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so where did that face come from? Right, I've always been of the opinion that he gets a new brain, and that's why the personality is never quite the same. He picks up new uh, habits, and that's clearly got to be in the same way as sort of you know the new mouth tastes, things taste different. Clearly, new brain means slightly different thinking. Maybe I think so most of from? the brain. I think it'll be most of the brain. I, I would, al- I always imagined it, uh, and obviously the, this is not an exact science because it's entirely made up. But uh, it's, it's just him that. rearranged. <laughs> yeah, it just gets <laughs> jiggled around a bit. It just happened. Maybe that's yeah, what it is. The brain just slightly goes... Bleh. Or it just tweaks a bit of DNA and just squiggles it from that. I mean, if you put on a different suit, a different hat, you feel different. Different shit. It's never happened. Yeah, so imagine imagine if, uh, if you get a whole new body, uh, then, you, then you would behave differently. Well, that's, that was the one that, that everyone went mental for. It was like, why isn't the doctor a woman this time? Hey, I think the, the problem with this, uh, this whole argument is everybody says, a woman. You yeah. don't ever cast a man yeah. as the Doctor. You cast yeah. 
a particular man. One day, I'm reasonably confident somebody in this role, whether it's me or someone else, will say not, let's cast a woman. They'll say, that person. Yeah. That's the one who could be the doctor. That one there. Yep. Uh, and that's what you do. I think most, the vast majority of men in the world would be terrible at playing the doctor. Yep. There are Mace relatively few who, uh, who, who would be great at it. Um, so you're not casting a man. You're not casting a gender. You're not casting anything like that. You're just casting someone that you think will set that role on fire. Yeah. And I think for now, that is Peter. Yeah. Uh, I thought yeah. it was Matt before. I think it someday was, you, you're going to say, was uh, you're gonna say her. That's, that's Super Doctor. Super Perkins. But it's, Super not about, it's not about the gender thing. It's yeah. about the person who can inhabit that role. The only reason you can have to cast someone in a role, full stop, the only reason is because you think they'll be brilliant. There can't be any other player on the board. That's all yep. they can be. You've created the Angels, and so far I believe you're the only person who's actually written for them. Mm. Uh, they've been very successful, and I imagine that in the inevitability that Doctor Who goes on for uh, another 50 years, and for some reason you decide you don't want to keep being head writer for the next 50 years, mm. Um, that someone else will end up writing for the angels. Mm. I mean, some of the, the other monsters are uh, possibilities, but I yeah, can't sure. see the angels completely disappearing and no, never being brought not, back. No. Uh, what are your feelings about sort of someone else writing for something that you completely created and have so I much ownership over? I would love it. That would be fantastic. No, re really, to put something yeah. into the monster pool of Doctor Who and then get to watch them uh, doing things I didn't know were coming would be brilliant. In fact... It's not going to happen, but um, a very good Doctor Who writer uh, pitched a great idea for the Weeping Angels the other day, and I was very excited about it. We, we had a long phone call about it, and I, and I went thinking, that is going to be brilliant. And about two days later, he admitted he wasn't going to have time to do it. So it might be, it, hopefully we'll get to the next year. But, oh, well, and and, and I, I'd forgotten, I'd said it to him, but I did. I think I, I'd said to him, come up with a new idea for the Weeping Angels. I'm, I'm probably done. To be honest, on what you can Aww. do with the Weeping Angels, but <laughs> no, but, uh, but other players nice. have to have to have a go. I mean, there's only so many times you can think, right? It's a chase scene, and there's <laughs> statues. Uh, who came up with this for an idea? How many times do the lights flicker? Um, what happens if a moth sees them? Does the, is the alien is the <laughs> alien invasion cancelled at that point? That's another thing is that you've got you've got the fashion around which is loads of tiny little things that can yeah. see. The weeping angels they cancel each other out. Yeah, most of, um, most things cancel. All out your, the your angels. just cancel out. <laughs> so CCTV cancels out the weeping angels. <laughs> I do not. I'm I'm, I'm slightly troubled by the angels because I did not think that I had invented that. I didn't think that was me at all. <laughs> uh, I was absolutely confident. I'd seen. A weeping angel before an angel specifically, you know, with, you know, with wings doing that, and yet I cannot find it. Anyway. <laughs> oh, God. I, I thought it That's was because it's moved now. That's I thought it was in this graveyard ne next to a, a hotel that we used to go to uh, for Christmas. Because I remember seeing this graveyard that was locked up with big chains on it, saying "dangerous, unsafe structure." And I think yes, that is a scary graveyard. It's yeah, actually yeah. keeping. <laughs> Uh, and I remember seeing, or I think I remember seeing, an angel inside it with its face plunged in its hands. Uh, and I went to show it to Joshua a few years later, saying, "This is where I thought the weeping angels," and it wasn't there. And I thought, "Well, I must have <laughs> seen it. So, I must have seen it Maybe somewhere it else." It was there, but there was a silence next to it, and you I forgot. Could, Maybe. <laughs> uh, and then I, I, I did try to. I, I went around. I image searched to say, "Well, where is this angel that I first saw?" And uh, I, because of, obviously, if I put weeping or lamenting or crying angel into the image search engine. Oh, I guess it's you. It's you. It's you. shows I made. <laughs> Maybe you created it and sent it back in time by itself. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then somebody sent me quite recently a picture from Belgium, which is an angel, a statue of an angel, wearing a gas mask. <laughs> wow. I'm not kidding, really. I mean, <laughs> and that's, that's, that, that means that all, all my with oh, a limited creativity well, with a is with down a to one statue in Belgium. <laughs> You can't be scared of something you invented. I, I'm not scared of Weeping Angels. I'm scared oh, of everything. Okay. I'm a wuss. I'm really afraid. <laughs> uh, well, I think Doctor Who is about as scary as I can go through. Yeah. And most of that is 
through uh, having your break comedy as well at the same time. Yeah, that's what sort of, I think you, you you have kept me through Doctor Who. With the, <laughs> I've got to keep watching so I understand the Moffat episode. It's designed to reasonably terrify eight-year-olds, but well done. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> petrifying. Well, that's, the... that's my tolerance. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the levels we're That's not my tolerance. I'm very, very bad at scary. I'd even like me scary. I don't watch scary at all. Doctor Who's no. like my limit. Yeah, yeah. It's as scary as anything should ever be. The, the press constantly put out stories going, no one's watching, less people are watching Doctor Who less people are watching Doctor Who less but the numbers are higher because of iPlayer and things yes how quickly do you want this old system to die <laughs> well to be honest only the press care yeah uh, and, 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 and the day on which I, I, I will know that Doctor Who's d- days are numbered I want the press don't do a doom story in Doctor Who <laughs> <laughs> they know if they put Doctor Who on the cover or uh, inside on a big I think they will sell more papers that's how big it is yes our, our audience has migrated to the point where and I think this is true now, that uh, more than half our audience watch it later. Yeah. Whether it's later that same day or later in that week. And never mind, uh, I mean, you, you've got, I, what, what you have now is the Live Plus 7, uh, which is uh, our, our whopping great rating, uh, consistent with all the previous years, that happens after a week. But the truth is, it carries on growing after that. Yeah. And episode yeah. The X Factor, no one watches again after its first week. Yeah. And something like Doctor Who... Uh, how many people have seen Christopher Eccleston's first episode now or David Tennant's first episode now? It has a shelf life. It's watched for years yep. afterwards. It is a far bigger audience. And for the record, 77 million is the correct rating. That's what we get internationally. We are not Americans. We, not do, we do not dismiss the rest of the world <laughs> as if they don't count. 77 million. That's quite a lot. We, we are still uh, using a rating system uh, devised around... Uh, Live the television, you can't, see, <laughs> you can't see it again after it's first gone out. Yeah. Uh, the fact is, uh, television uh, shows uh, exist as downloads, as DVDs, yeah. as all these things, for years and years. It's only the papers that care, and it's only a, a certain section of uh, fandom that cares. The BBC know exactly how huge Doctor Who is, that's why um, we own all those covers, and every time the BBC defend themselves, it's... Doctor Who and oh that other show with the detective which is very popular. Too. <laughs> um, uh, that is the is talk those, about Miss Marple by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's those two Doctor Who and Sherlock uh, uh, are, are always. How did he die? It's alive. Well, trampoline across was, he, and he landed in the graveyard. He, he avoided the pavement. Uh, <laughs> Clearly, it was a uh, crossover episode, and there's just a TARDIS. Yes, the the one. Which you go yeah, yeah. swimming for. As each series of Doctor Who goes on, and it continues to have pretty much the same audience, which is extraordinary in television, yeah. it becomes a bigger and bigger thing. Because uh, you know, a kid who gets into Doctor Who this year can, uh, can tell me, you know, it's been it's been running first level. It's been running since two thousand and five, and they go, "Wow, I can go and watch all that and get all these toys." And then you say, well, "Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it's been running since nineteen sixty three, and there's even more." So it's just the sheer size of it now. I mean, it's almost impossible to remember what it was like in two thousand and five when there were thirteen new episodes yeah. of Doctor Who. Now there's loads. There's <laughs> masses. I, I was. I was saying that to Russell the other day, I was like, how many episodes are there? There's so many. I, there's, we're on to our fourth Doctor. There's a, a the really fun series. fact that the 801st episode of Doctor Who will be Series 8, Episode 1. So 801 yes. is 801. Yeah. It's one of those, I love that. That's so and nice. the seventh episode of, uh, of Series 6 was the 777th. <sighs> It's it's there's too much of it actually. We yeah. shouldn't end it now. Okay. Yeah, no, we should never ever end it. Must go on. No, forever. that's the thing. That's yeah. my job soon. Yeah. Taking over. Can I take over Doctor Who? How do I do this? <laughs> do where, where, did you, where did well, the Russell T Davis? Uh, you're offered a, a very secret meeting. They're either going to kill you or offer you Doctor Who. Ooh, that's fifty. Is it fifty fifty chance? Because I'll take. I don't know I'll how many. I don't know how many shot in my garage first. <laughs> <laughs> the floor was very sticky. <laughs> At the very I, least, I want to build a TARDIS. I, I at least TARDIS. Can I come and play in the TARDIS at some point? Sure That's the question. That's what I want to do. Um, I want to play in the TARDIS. Yes. Uh, Everyone wants to play in the TARDIS. So, <laughs> do you play in the TARDIS? Yeah. As soon as it's built, you just go, <laughs> shut the doors, I just need to look around for writing great. purposes. And, and, and you just is, running around. A new one is our first 360 degree TARDIS. It's all round. So you can walk into that set and everything you look at makes yep. sense within the fiction. It's not a, a partial set, it's a whole set. So that's a cool set. <laughs> Just, um, I think that's just how a show changes as it solidifies and becomes older. In okay. a way. Um, you know, if if Russell had stayed on, yeah. on Doctor Who, it would still have changed. 
Yes. I mean, that because I remember when we had our, our, our handover chat, he was saying, so what are you going to do? You're going to change that? And, said, and I was saying, what, what would you change? Yeah. And he was saying, no, I, he said, and we both agreed, it's time to, to kick a lot of stuff out and change oh, it. Yeah. And actually, it is time again to do that. It's, yeah. it's just I just mm-hmm. felt watching last time around, I just thought, oh, it's just time we fix that and change that and move that up a bit and change that tone. So there just Fair comes enough. moments when you... It's also, I mean, remember when it first came back, and for quite a long while, it was simply extraordinary that the Doctor was back on. Yes. And there was a, and, and, and extraordinary that was a fantasy show on British television that, that was mainstream and everybody watched. Yes. And that there was a family show. There was a family show at all. That yeah. the whole family sat down together. That was for ages, we're all going, wow, what's that coming from? <laughs> yes. now, uh, uh, now Doctor Who has changed the landscape of television into which it originally tried to fit. So yeah. it is. It's a different thing. Doctor Who is much, much madder than it used to be. That's yep. it, every year it got, uh, and and it's not a change b- b- uh, between Russell and myself. It's uh, each year it just gets a bit madder, a bit madder. <laughs> because there's a whole lot of other fantasy shows out there, and we're just thinking, right, we've got to be the maddest. <laughs> we've got to be more insane and have more ideas and more monsters and more locations. We've got to be the one uh, that can't do and never wants to do a bubble show all set in one set. You know, we've yeah. got to be the one that is the big movie every week. So in a way, that's the biggest change, is that the Doctor Who I took over was, uh, I, was once again, as it should always be, a huge television icon yeah. that you could have confidence with. Whereas the, the, the uh, Doctor that Russell brought back, and I was there in, in a yeah. junior, very junior role, it's all tiptoeing around saying, is this okay? Can we do this? Is this really happening? 13 episodes and out without getting killed was sort of the idea. Yeah. I um, mean, right to the fact, you know, he did die. He did die. He did die. But remember, Chris, because his costume was, yeah. it was so BBC One mainstream. You know, it was like, yeah. no, he's a, just a, he's a no nonsense northern bloke with a short haircut and a sensible jacket. Uh, one year later, David Tennant yeah. turns up and it's back to Doctor Who costume, <laughs> back to Doctor yeah. Who hair, back to comedy, back to all of that. Yeah. So it's just, it's just each year, uh, and, you know, this, we're about to turn the Doctor back into uh, an older pro- prof- uh, professorial type of world, yeah. you know, um, no, it's, it's, true. it's just, it changes all the time and it's keeping ahead of, uh, keeping ahead of the audience in a way. And that's why it survived so long, because yeah. it is different, it's constantly changing up. Well, it's series, all, 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 sh- all shows age and they yeah, all yeah. age sort of in the same way. You learn how to do it, you get really slick at it. And, you, and then you think you're really, really slick at it and everyone started to yawn. <laughs> and you think, oh, God, we're really slick at this, but everyone knows what we're going to do. So now we've got to get, to get a bit raw at it and do it in a different direction. That happens in every show. Every show I've ever worked on, you think, you, you think we're a bit raw, but it's, quite, but it's pretty good. Now we're really slick and it's great. Now we're even slicker than before. Oh, come back. <laughs> and, and that's what happens. It happens on every show. You get good at it and good at it is the enemy in the end. Yeah. So you've got to make it Difficult enough for yourself that you're no longer quite as good. It's like making work for yourself, really. Oh, God. Yeah, so that's that's in doing that. That's, <laughs> really sure. that's everything. Doctor Who's fantastic. Thank Doctor you for fantastic. Uh, oh, carrying it on and doing such a great job of it. Um, and Sherlock and Tintin and probably inevitably James Bond. I see you taking that. You've gone through everything. <laughs> You've gone else through you all love. the other oh, British Something heroes. must be spared, surely. <laughs> the Hobbit, that's been done, I suppose. Yes. Robin Hood? I don't know. Um, yeah. I can't inflict my one and a half plots on every franchise. <laughs> it's not. It's not fair for art. Uh, anyway, that was Stephen Moffat. That one. Yeah, on that one. You. And Doctor Who is on um, 23rd November. 23rd for the November, 50th yeah. anniversary special. And then the new Doctor in Christmas. And yes. goodbye to the old Doctor. Watch it. You'll see all of the answers we, to questions we didn't ask. Yeah. Mm. How you should see things. How, this is how to do an interview. <laughs> this is how to do Stupid it. press. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Bye. 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 And we're done. We're done. Okay. We're done. Thank you very much. Right. Good fun.